A surprising study was released today in Ottawa. It shows that Métis in Ontario are affected by chronic diseases more than any others. The Métis Nation of Ontario conducted a study looking into chronic health problems. The study showed Métis are suffering at much higher rates compared to the general population. President Gary Lipinski says the study supports what he's always suspected. There are too many people telling us all too often um, they've been diagnosed with cancer, um, with heart disease problems, with diabetes and respiratory problems. Too, too often. And now for some of the findings of the study, we're joined by Dr. Storm Russell with the Métis Nation of Ontario. Hello, Dr. Russell. Thank you for joining us. What stands, okay, out here, about, what stands out about Métis in Ontario and, and their battles with, with chronic disease? Uh, some of the same issues uh, that, uh, that you have out west there, Michael. Certainly remoteness and access to care is a major issue and you see that reflected in the data that's coming out of these studies. Not only are the prevalence and incident rates of diabetes, for example, uh, very much higher among the Métis, 26% higher, uh, you see it in greater use of emergency department readmissions, hospital readmissions and that kind of thing, indicating that uh, there are issues with continuity of care and, and d d chronic disease management earlier upstream in the whole disease process which are of concern. So we at the Métis Nation of Ontario will be looking closely at that and how can we facilitate or improve that access and, and earlier management of chronic disease. Okay, um, you, you use the phrase continuity of care. Uh, can you explain that for me a little bit? Uh, uh, you know, it sounds like jargon. What, what, what does that mean exactly? It means that uh, when you go to see your uh, care provider, whether that be a nurse or um, a physician, that uh, balls don't get dropped, that if you need to see a specialist, your records uh, uh, move over from uh, one care provider to another in a seamless fashion, mm -hmm. that no information is lost, that you're kept in the loop. And things like early detection, uh, screening, those kinds of things occur so that um, early indicators of chronic disease can be picked up and responded to very early on in the, the disease process so that uh, it, um, prevents that from uh, either developing into a more serious chronic condition. Certainly, certainly. Are, did you find, you, you mentioned diabetes, but are, are there other diseases that seem prevalent among the Métis in Ontario? Certainly what we looked at, and I have to point out that this is a landmark study because it is the first study of chronic disease among the Métis of Ontario, uh, thing, looking at things like prevalence and incidence. Uh, so for that reason it's very important and it also um, points to some of the, at this point, limitations of the study. We started looking at um, cardiovascular disease, uh, diabetes, respiratory disease and uh, starting to look at cancer. Uh, we collected data over a two to three year period depending on what we, we looked at because they were done with various teams of researchers mm -hmm. looking at the different issues. But uh, that's what we've looked at initially and certainly we want to continue to collect information on uh, mental health, on arthritis, on injury rates and so on and begin to build a really solid database that will inform program policy planning and, uh, and, and t give us good direction about where to target our interventions, where we're going to get, um, have the most impact. Okay. Well, you talked about, you know, the services that, that might contribute to some of these problems. Are there underlying factors maybe that contri may contribute to why, uh, you know, cr chronic disease is so prevalent? Yes, certainly. Um, uh, in terms of what determines these kinds of chronic diseases, the reasons are very complex and interrelated and they have a lot to do with access not only to care but access to healthy fresh food at a price that uh, normal families can afford. Mm -hmm. And uh, in rural and remote areas, often particularly up north, uh, we know what the price of food is and how difficult it is to get fresh Certainly. food. And that rolls into problems with childhood obesity which then start patterns of, of chronic disease uh, symptoms occurring far earlier in the in the among a, a far 
larger portion of the population. Things around education, access to prevention, promotion, uh, awareness raising activities, all mm -hmm. kinds of things factor into that level of income, uh, employment status and uh, education are okay. all factors that contribute. Well, we only have a few seconds now, but, but how do you think your research is going to help people, uh, you know, in the future? Uh, well, we're putting this to good use right away. Already we're having a planning session immediately following this launch uh, of this study with all our uh, healing and wellness workers. And uh, we're sitting down with them and hearing their stories and uh, learning from them best practices about okay. what they found to work, what they're seeing on the, uh, on the ground in terms of uh, how can we improve access for the Métis citizens, how can we better support people who, uh, with their lifestyle cho choices and point them in the right direction and link them up with the kinds of supports that will help them uh, lead healthier uh, lives. All right, Doctor. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure, Michael.